Good morning. How are we doing? I'm sure there's some more people to arrive this morning. What a beautiful morning. It's beautiful, isn't it? Is it nice to get up and it's not raining or it's not cold? It's really, if you get too warm by those radiators, please do turn them down a little bit. Um, but we've had them on um, this morning just to take the chill out of here. Um, David and Andrew have started their half Ironman, I think, at 7 o'clock this morning. And um, so I'm sure we hear a little bit of how they're getting on. Uh, rather them than me, I think if I was doing the swimming part, I think I'd have drowned by now. There's no way I could do uh, that length. Um, but but Cheek is going to kick us off this morning. So please come and come and share a word of scripture with us and pray. Come on, let's welcome him. Great to see him this morning. Morning, church. It's lovely to see you all this morning. And also to spend, uh, or share rather, the first Sunday of the month of June with you. I can't believe we're in June already. Um, but that's my problem, not yours, don't worry. Um, before you know it, we'll be in the, uh, the loft looking for the Christmas tree and the Christmas decorations. I'm so not ready for that yet. Right. The scripture that I want to share this morning um, can be found in Isaiah 43. And I'm just going to read from verses 15 through to 19. So that's Isaiah 43. And reading from verse 15 says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise, they are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. But do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's just bow our heads. You know, it blows my mind that God's heart is that he constantly wants to do something new in our lives. Irrespective of age and, you know, how many years we've been saved for and we could be 50 years into our relationship with God and he would still want to do something new again and again and again in our lives. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I just want to encourage you to prepare yourself, get ready, and em fully embrace the new thing that God wants to do in you. And it might mean that you, you need to let go of you know, some things, some stuff, some, some, some habits, some people, and that's, and that's fine. But we, we let go of these things so that we have the capacity to accept the new thing that God wants to do in our lives. And so, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your presence, Lord God. We pray concerning the scripture that we have read, that, Father, you will search our hearts, Lord God, and if there is anything that we are holding on to dearly that is not from you, Father, we ask that you give us the grace and the strength to let go of those things so that we can fully accept what you have for us, Lord, the new thing that you want to do in our lives, Lord. We commit this entire service into your hands, from the worship to the word and the fellowship thereafter, Father. Be in control of it all, Father. Have your way and allow your will to be done here today. We thank you for the new thing that you are doing in this church, Lord God, for you are doing a new thing here. You're doing a new thing in this community, and we thank you for it, Lord God. And we pray, Father, that you will finish the work that you have started here, Lord God. And as a family together, Lord, we declare this morning that we will see and experience more breakthrough, more revelation, more manifestations of the Holy Spirit, fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit, healings, testimonies, Father. We will see more of these things here in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do in our lives and in this church. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
going to stand with us this morning. We're going to worship.
God. Yes, God. Do you believe what we're singing this morning, church? His name is power. His name is life. His name is healing. Why does he have those characteristics? Because of the power of the cross. The power of the cross. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. There's nothing left to be defeated. He has defeated everything. Death and hell have nothing on our God. Nothing whatsoever. And so we're going to sing this again in a second. But we're going to have communion as we sing this. I don't know about you, but I've been in church all my life. And I've been in some communion services. I feel like I'm at a funeral. This is not a funeral. This is a resurrection. Is this microphone on? This is not a funeral. This is a resurrection. And there's a declaration of praise that needs to come out as we share this bread and we drink from this cup. But I want us to do it in, in two ways this morning. One is that bread and the cup comes around. You take time with the people you're with, your family, parents, guardians, you got children. Take some time on them and explain what you're doing. And we're going to take some time to thank God for our salvation. But on the other side of that, I'm sure you know somebody who doesn't know Jesus yet. For God to love the world, not for God to love the church. For God to love the world. There's people outside this building that you know and I know who don't know Jesus yet. And so as you take a moment to thank God for your salvation, when you finish giving thanks, I want you to lift those people up before God. And then, I don't know about you, but the people that I know that don't know Jesus, I'd love them to be standing with me in church and singing this song. Anybody else? That they would come and sing, your name is power, your name is life, your name is healing. And I'm sure there's somebody that's on your heart right now. Maybe that's a family member. Maybe that's a friend. Maybe that's somebody the Holy Spirit's just bringing to your mind right now. But we're going to pass this bread round. We're going to pass this cup round. Just as they just play gently in the background. And then you're going to take a moment just to thank God for your salvation. And then they're going to begin to sing. And as they begin to sing, you begin to declare out. And you begin to speak out the name of the person that's on your heart. That they would come to the realization that their spiritual eyes would be open. And they would see Jesus and all his glory and his power and his might. And pray salvation. Pray salvation over their lives. Maybe it's a whole family. Because God brings families to church. Maybe it's a whole family that you just need to bring before God. Amen. You guys come and help me serve. You come and help me serve. We're going to pass this bread round. This cup round before God. this bread and this cup comes around you just take a moment between you and God say parents guardians you got some children then take some for them just trying to explain to them what it is that they're they're doing the importance nothing in the bread nothing in the cup it's what it represents to us the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus we still believe in this church there's still power in the blood of Jesus there's still power in the blood of Jesus to touch and heal and restore we still believe that Jesus saves today and he heals today just take a moment Father we give thanks we give thanks nobody loves us like you do God Thank you for the salvation that you bought for us, God. The love that you show. The love that you continue to show.
Just keep thanking Him. Like the songwriter says, we could search for all eternity long and still find nobody like Jesus. right now the Holy Spirit is just indicating to you that you're just going to pray for for salvation we've received salvation we want them to receive salvation also so you got that person in your heart in your mind going to become intercession and we're just going to lift these precious people up before God as we sing this song and so these words come on the screen your name is power your name is love your name is healing you know put their name in there somehow squeeze their name into the sentence and say God I I declare over my brother my sister my mother my father my aunt my uncle my niece my nephew my work colleague my friend my neighbor whoever it may be we speak them out before God Come on, stand with me, church. We want to sing this out. And it's okay for you to begin to shout their name out before God. We sing the song, Shout Jesus from the Rooftops. If the church doesn't shout Jesus, who's going to shout Jesus? If we don't speak out His name, who's going to speak out His name? Because a broken world won't. The enemy won't. It's the church who's alive and well and kicking. It's the church who, who understands the salvation and the power of God in our lives. And we get to shout out the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready to speak that name out before God? Come on, worship band. Lead us in this. You just begin to declare out that name before God this morning.
everyone just continue to lift up their name before God. Father, there's precious people. The people that you put so much value on that you sent Jesus to die for them also. Father, there's people on our hearts and in our minds this morning that, Father, we long to see in the kingdom of God. So, Father, we bring these precious people to you this morning. Father, we pray the seeds that have been sown over the years, the Holy Spirit, you would water them. Lord, would you convince them and convict them of their sin and bring them into that place of right relationship with you. Father, for some of us, would you give us the honor and the privilege of leading them into the kingdom of God? Give us the honor to share the gospel and lead them to Christ all in the same conversation. So, Father, we bring them to you this morning. And in faith, we say thank you for their salvation. In faith, we say thank you, God. So, Father, we will not allow the enemy to steal it, kill it, or destroy it. But, Father, those names were lifted up to you this morning in prayer and in faith. Father, we put a hedge of protection around those things. That we will see the answers to our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I can't hear you, church. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The name that is above every other name. That wonderful, beautiful name of Jesus. It's in your name. It's only in your name but which man can be saved. name we pray amen amen you may be seated while you're sitting down we turn around and say hello to somebody say it's great to see you welcome them introduce yourself if you don't know them it's great to see you this morning have we any news from Andrew and David so far so they've done their is it how many miles swim? Uh, 1.9 kilometers. 1.9 kilometers. I'm old school. What's that? About a mile and a half? Mile and then they're on their cycle now. Yeah. And then 55 mile cycle and then a 13 mile run. Why oh why? Uh, we'll continue to pray. I know a few of them are after the service going down to the finish line to see them. Uh, please get lots of photographs we'd like to see uh, and show them in church. Let me go through a few announcements. Uh, and then we'll just release our children and our young people this morning. Um, it's great to see some guests with us this morning. Welcome. It's really great to see you. You're here for the first time. Can you give us a wave? It's really, really welcome. Great to see you. Can we just welcome them in church? Great to see you. Morning, morning, morning. We're just the church that loves Jesus. Well, I love Jesus. We just love Jesus. And so how we express that looks in so many different ways through our worship and our praise and even as we come around the table of the Lord this morning, I just really felt it when that song was going on, that you know what, I, I want the people that I know that don't know Jesus to come and have communion with, with, with us. Even if it's not this church, another church, I really don't care as long as they're in the kingdom of God. That's our heart this morning. Let me fire through these announcements. Uh, Wednesday night, we're continuing on looking at um, Isaiah 61. Uh, we're on verse, we completed verse 7, didn't we? I'm trying to remember. Um, we could be on verse 8 uh, on Wednesday night. Come along, join in with this. Again, part of our tea and coffee rota team, if you can help us, please fill in some forms at the back. Next week, we get to bring some members in. I think there's about 11 new members or 9 to 10 new members coming in next Sunday morning, which is really good news. A few other people who can't do that Sunday, so we'll have another Sunday to bring a few more people in, but that will be happening next Sunday morning. Two weeks' time is Father's Day. It's to come around really, really quick. And so what we're having on that morning is we'll have breakfast together. 
Yeah, I like the sound of that. Uh, we did this for Mother's Day, and uh, so we'll have breakfast together to kick the service off, and then we'll have about a one-hour service. All our guys will be taking part. It'll be testimonies and um, song. We did a choir one year as well, didn't we? I'm not sure we'll do that again. Um, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll have some fun on that particular uh, morning as well, and we'll celebrate not just earthly fathers and fathers who are men who are mentors, but also our Heavenly Father uh, for what a great father that he is. The Sunday after that is our mission Sunday, God of the Nations Day. So um, we're getting some reports coming in from the missionaries that we support, both UK and worldwide, and that will give you some reports on those particular things. But also God of the Nations. So if you're from another nation, we want you to come in your national dress. And we want you to bring some national food with you. And then after that, we'll have some lunch together. We'll have the tables out at the back. We'll have a service and then we'll have some lunch together. So bring your national food with you. One year, I think we had cow's hooves, I think, one year. Was it cow's hooves that we had? I don't think there was very much meat on them. Um, but I don't know what you eat in your particular country. Maybe I just got to bring lots of potatoes with me. Um, but again, I want you to bring some national food with you and we'll have some lunch together. Um, on the 29th of June, uh, Take Back Conference, our ladies' conference. You can book online, book this in, ladies, as best you possibly can. This was last year's conference uh, that they had, and so we have another one. It's only five pounds for the day. That includes a cup of tea and a, a biscuit and stuff when you come in, and also a light lunch. That's a really good deal. That's better than McDonald's. Um, so ladies, book in. Um, husbands, if you'd like your lady to be out for the morning, your wife out for the morning, book her in also. Go onto our website, book in uh, for that particular morning, and they'll have a great time. Lots of testimonies, lots, lots of ladies really impacted the conference that we had last year, so please do that. We have a Korean movie night coming up on the 12th of July. Again, in the week or so time, you'll be able to book online for this. There's no cost for it. But we need you to book in to help us at just with the catering side of things. So we showed God's Not Dead a little while ago. So this is the second part, God's Not Dead 2. It is a PG, so parents do go on and have a look um, of what that means if you're bringing your children uh, along to that particular evening. Then the 21st of July, we have a picnic in the park. We did this last year. After the Sunday morning service, we all meet in Ferry Meadows. You bring a picnic with you. We'll have some fun and games. We'll bring a football. Last year, we had tug of war and lots of other games. Uh, children, please, uh, parents, do bring your children along. We'll have particular games for them also. We just pray the weather's like this, and um, we'll just have a great time of fellowship together. I've mentioned this over the last few weeks. We want to encourage you to open your home. Um, and uh, as soon as we get another, a few more people to open their homes, what we'll do is um, we'll get a date together where people say, I, I want to come, uh, I want to go visit somebody's house. So if you're going to open your home, the forms at the back, and many people that you can take in your house, all we're asking you to do is provide one plate of food and maybe some drinks, and then whoever comes to your house also brings a plate of food. And uh, so you share lunch together, basically, and you just have a talk around the table. And, you know, Jesus had lots of meals with people in Scripture, and you can sit down and, and you can read some of those conversations. And that, so when you sign up at your house, when we get enough, then what we'll do is I'll sit down with you and explain what it is, what it's not. And even if you only take three or four people, that's absolutely fine. Um, but please fill the form in the back. Um, David and Bridget have opened their caravan down there on Stanton, and so they're opening for the, you to come and have a barbecue. I think we should all just, they're not here this morning, we all should just kind of go and pop in, shouldn't we? And uh, so, um, but yeah, again, so if you can help, please just uh, sign in at the back. Kintsugi Hope, we hope to get this started in September. This is our well-being course. Um, if, you know, uh, if you want to sign up for this, again, the forms are at the back to fill in for that. And again, all the teams, we could do with some help in, in some of our teams if you can help us. Okay, I think that's everything. We're going to release our children and our young people this morning. Have a great morning upstairs. Enjoy what's going on. And for the rest of us, um, if you've got your Bibles, go with me to Galatians chapter 5. Why is there no youth? Why is there no youth? Okay, just before we do that, I've asked Chantel to come and share a word of testimony, um, which fits in um, really what I want to share about uh, this morning. So Chantel, please come uh, and share.
not on? Has it died? Why does my microphone always die? Let me give you one of these. just wanted to share a testimony um, about what God has done recently um, in my life. I can't believe it myself, but God is just so good. Um, so about two, we- two weeks ago, we had the Pentecost Sunday. Um, so, and then, if you remember that, and then the week leading to Pentecost Sunday, um, I had two job offers. Um, I know that a lot of people will think that's amazing, but for me at the time, it was very stressful because it just felt like I had to pick between these two jobs and I found it really hard to choose which job to go for. And it felt like the more that I was praying, the more I couldn't hear God. Because <laughs> I think there was a lot of me that was in, like I had to give a decision like now about each job and I just didn't know which job to choose. So to give a bit of context to each of the jobs, one job was in the industry that I've studied and work in at the moment. And um, yeah, in the the industry that I work in at the moment. And it was basically still full time um, and still, um, and the money was okay. And then there was another job that I thought would be offer me a better work-life balance. It's slightly a new career. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll try for that position. But that position, um, the pay wasn't that great. And so I remember speaking to Chica, uh, my husband, about it during the week. And I kept on um, nagging him about what I should do. And it got to a point where he looked at me first time. We've been married nearly 15 years. And he said to me, I'm tired. Like, he, he couldn't advise me anymore. <laughs> he was just like, I cannot with you. Just make a decision. And I was just like, I can't make, I just can't. And so I remember him saying, um, pray and wait. Just pray and wait. And I just kept saying to myself, I can't wait. I have to give these people an answer like now. I, I can't wait. And so that was the Friday before the, um, the Pentecost Sunday. So Friday evening, we sat down, we weighed up both of the jobs, and I remember Chica saying, it's so good if the new, the job that's slightly in a different industry, the pay was on par with the new job. And then with, so with the new job in the new industry, you'd actually have a a decent salary, but a lot more work-life balance. I wish we could just mix the two together. And so I remember saying to him, there's no movement on the salary for the new industry job. There's no ma- movement on the salary for that. And it's just, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. These are, these are the facts and we've got to work with these facts. So Friday evening we sat down and we, and we weighed up the costs of each, taking each job. We weighed up the jobs side by side. I hope I'm not confusing you. Uh, is everyone with me? So far? Okay. <laughs> we weighed up the jobs, both of the jobs side by side and try to make sense of which job would, would be better off, for, uh, make sense uh, more financially for us. Anyway, it got to Friday evening and we made the decision to stay in the industry that I'm in, stay with the job, the new, that, that, um, the, the industry job that I'm familiar with and go with that. So Friday, Saturday before Pentecost Sunday, I went to work. I was really happy. I wrote out my notice and everything for my new, for my, for my job, current job. And I was like, right, I've made a decision, that's it. I'm going with the industry job, that's it. And then I, was, I remember coming back from work on, uh, on the Saturday evening, the sun was shining and I was, my music was so loud in the car. I was so like, yes, I've made a decision. And you know, the sun was shining, I just felt really good about the decision I made. And then um, got home, I was like, right, Chica, that's it. I've, I've, I've written out my notice, I'm gonna hand it on on Tuesday, that's it. My last day is such and such a day. We've made a decision and I was like literally electric sliding throughout the house for the whole evening because I was so happy that finally this weight had been lifted and the decision had finally been made. So it gets to Pentecost Sunday now and I'm at church and I'm like, yes, Lord, I've made a decision. (laughs) And then Pastor Phil um, starts to pray. And then one of the things he prayed was pray about, um, he mentioned the word fear. 
and praying um, about um, if you if you have if you're facing any type of fear. And I remembered part of one of the I had came up for three reasons, but one of those reasons was fear of starting this job in the same industry. There was something really unsettling about it. The recruitment process was very long-winded and not very um, proper, as it were. And so, uh, but I was trying to make like a square peg fit into a round hole. And I was like, no, this is it, this is it. I am so going for this industry job, that's it, I'm settled. So I came up and then uh, Pastor Paul was like, okay, where, what, what are you feeling, what's the fear? And I was like, fear of starting the new job. I was like, you know, like <laughs> weeping my eyes out or whatever. And so I remember Pastor Phil saying, does it give you work-life balance? And I was like, well, I have Saturdays off. In my head, I'm thinking, I've got a Saturday to Sunday off. Yeah, it's work-life balance. And I thought that that was what it was. Anyway, prayed, left it alone. So Monday morning came. I had a day off in noon because I worked on Saturday. Sitting up in my room, and my phone rings. And it's the recruiter for the new industry job. So remember, the new industry job, the pay was really low. So I was like, yep, that's fine. So she calls me, but I had already told her that I'm not going for that job. I declined it. I was like, thank you very much for your time. God bless you. Till next time. She calls me on Monday morning, and I was like, why is this? I know this number. Stop calling me, please. I've made my decision. I don't want anyone to interrupt the decision I've already made. I am, I've made my decision, and I, that's it. She calls me, and she's like, oh, hello, hi. I've got your email declining the job. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that I've gone back to the to the, uh, the original recruiter, and I know I told you that there's no movement on the salary, but they've agreed to um, put you up to the highest um, scale of the salary, which will make it on par with the new with the current industry job, and then it meant that I would have all, basically all that my holidays would be pa paid, which before in the original agreement wouldn't be paid, which equates about three months a year. A paid holiday, basically working at a school, in case you're wondering. Um, <laughs> giving it away. <laughs> so, but, 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 but then she said, yeah, and then they're also going to take you, because it was originally going to be a temporary contract, and they're also going to take you on as permanent. And she was like, this is not something they don't draw, normally do through that particular recruitment service. That this is not something they normally do, um, but they, they really liked you in the interview, and they really want to take you on permanent, and they would have put your pay up straight away, and your pay goes up next year. And I just want to say, I just want to say thank God, because immediately I was like, oh my goodness, you know, like, I went to Chica, he was on a work call, and I was hovering over him like a fly. I was like, wait, 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 come downstairs and see me. <laughs> he was like, oh. like, yeah, so he came down, and, he, and then we spoke about it, and he was like, this job is beginning to make a lot of sense. And so, needless to say, I've accepted the, um, the job in the new industry, um, um, because, of course, um, I believe that's where God wanted me to be. So, yeah, I just come to testify, you know, about God's goodness and God's grace. I'm so happy and I'm so grateful for God. Honestly, this is all God's doing. And I'm really just come back to say thank you, really, and um, to God. And um, please keep me in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know all the... She shared this with us last Sunday, and um, I didn't know the other bit before you shared before all the stuff that was going, I'm not going for this, not going for this, this is a change. And I'm sitting there scratching my head thinking, oh, okay, I hope this is all right. And, um, you know, when people come up for prayer and you begin to prophesy, sometimes you don't know everything that's kind of going on. You don't know the whole background. Uh, but we only prophesy in part, don't we? And God takes care of the, the rest of the stuff. And uh, when she shared that with us last Sunday, we were just buzzing, thinking, oh, God, you are so faithful, so faithful. And I deliberately asked her to share this this morning because I want to speak about um, the faithfulness of God. We've been going through the fruit of the Spirit in the life of Jesus. And I think this is not supposed to be a hazard, but it is a hazard. It's got hazard things down here, and it's tripping me up. So if you've got Galatians 5, let's, let's have a look in there. Uh, this morning, just while you're finding Galatians 5, I want to take a moment and just pray over your job circumstance. I don't know what that is. Uh, we've done this many times here, but God's concerned about every single detail of our lives. I mentioned this last week or the week before. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. And um, God loves to cross T's and dot I's. God's into detail you look at the ladybird 
you look at the detail under a microscope of everything that's, that's there. You look at the detail how Jesus fed the 5,000, he sat them down in groups of 50. He's, he's very organized. And so he's concerned about your, your workplace. He's concerned that maybe where you are right now, maybe you're thinking of moving on, maybe you're thinking about changing careers. Uh, maybe you're having difficulty in your workplace right now. I want to take a moment just to pray. Because the testimony we heard this morning, we don't always want to hear just now and again. God should be doing stuff in our lives all the time that there should be testimonies every week of what God's doing through his grace, his power, his mercy, because nothing's impossible for God. That employer has no idea why they've suddenly upped the salary and paid all holidays and moved from a, a temporary contract into a permanent contract, but we do. Do you bow your heads with me a moment? I want to just take a moment just to pray around this. And if you're in a place right now concerning your job, maybe you're thinking of moving, maybe there's another job interview you're looking at, maybe there's, there's something along those lines. But if your head is bowed and every eye is closed, will you just stand to your feet for a moment? I want to take a moment just to pray over you concerning your employment. guys are standing testimonies like Chantel's are there to help increase our faith and what you're standing for right now is not impossible for God God changes temporary into permanent he makes low salaries better salaries he makes unpaid holidays paid holidays. We've heard it this morning. Nothing is impossible for God. And so, Father, your, your children are standing in this place because there's concern that's on their hearts concerning employment. And, Father, if it's on their hearts, it's on your heart. And I pray and ask right now in Jesus' name for incredible favor. Incredible favor. I feel like some of you are even looking at jobs that maybe you don't have the qualifications for. But you sense in your heart and your spirit that's the right thing to do. I have enough faith to believe that the employer can look at your application with favor and even train you in that job. Father, I pray as application forms go in, as interviews are taken, I ask that your presence would be in an interview room. I ask that your favor be over the application. I pray when they look at the applications that we look at, and there's something about this application form we have to interview, we have to employ. His Father, you know how to look after your children. And we continue to ask for favor and for blessing. Favor and blessing. And so when you're filling that application form on, and before you hit send, you take a moment and pray over it. And Father, I pray over this application. I pray that favor is released as I press send. And as they open it on their inbox, I pray, God, there would be something in the person that's reading that saying, yes, this is the next stage. Here we go. We've got to now go to interview. And in the reply that comes back about interview, God, I pray, as they respond to that, God, again, we ask for favor and blessing. And as they sit in that interview room, God, I pray that every question that's asked 
will be answered fully because, Holy Spirit, you will bring to remembrance everything that they know. Father, we want testimony after testimony after testimony to your grace, your power, and your mercy, to your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you're applying off and you get interviews and stuff, you don't need to let the rest of the church know, but if you wanted to drop me a text or drop me an email to let me know that you're going for an interview, um, we'll keep it confidential if you want that, but we certainly just want to pray over you. And then when you get the job, you need to come and stand here and testify. Is that all right? If you're too shy to do that, I'll, I'll, I'll interview you. I'll just ask you some questions. I um, mean, you try and keep Chantel quiet after that, there's no chance. There's no chance. Even while her husband is on a call, she's still shouting at him. Why? Because God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Let's look at this this morning. We're going through this uh, slowly, one, one at a time. Uh, verse 22 of Galatians 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. So this morning I want to look at the faithfulness of Jesus. And I want to pull out some of that stuff that hopefully that's going to help us a little bit understand a little bit more. Faithfulness talks about a firm and unswerving loyalty to a person to whom is united by promise, commitment, trustworthiness, and honesty. I ask you the question as I start this morning, is God faithful? Has God been faithful to you? This is a sign of faithfulness. When Jesus was in the garden, he didn't pray, God, where's plan B? He didn't cry out like that old hymn writer says. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have prayed something completely different in the garden, but he prayed, not my will be done, but yours. He was faithful to the Father. He was faithful to the plan and the organization and everything of what God had put in place, and he was faithful to you and me. So we get into the book of Hebrews and says, for the joy set before him, the joy is you and I. You are the joy of God. For the joy set before him, he went through the pain and the suffering of the cross. Matthew 23, 23, it says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You gave a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important things of the law, like justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Romans 3, 3. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Absolutely not. If you and I are unfaithful to God in any way in our lives, it doesn't stop God being faithful. He can't stop being who he is because you do something wrong in your life. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He will always be faithful. Even if we are faithless, he will always be faithful. In 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says this, I have fought the good fight of faith. You and I have to walk by faith. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. We have to walk in the faith that God gives us. Sometimes, like, like Mark 11 talks about, we have to pray things and give thanks for them even though we've not got the answer. So some of you this morning that were standing up about your employment and, and what's happening there, some of you just need to pray the prayer of thanks even though you've not set the application yet. Because God's that good. God's that great. God's that faithful. Does he not know the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end? Is he not the Alpha and the Omega? Does he not know what's on your heart? Does he not know what's going on in your heart and mind when you're typing out your CV and you're about to send off? Of course he does. Sometimes we've got to give thanks even though we've not received it yet. God wants to bless our plans. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the 
There's loads of things about faith in Scripture. I have kept the faith. If what God is looking for now is faithful people. We live in a world where everything changes so quickly. Doesn't work, we'll try something else. That relationship doesn't work, we'll try something else. God's looking for a faithful people. He's looking for people who will just be completely faithful no matter what. No matter if we're on a, on a mountaintop or whether we're in a valley. He's looking for people who are faithful. He's looking for the people who will just stick through everything. The, the difficulty, the, the rain, the storm, the, the, whatever is going on in our lives. He's looking for us just to remain faithful to him because he remains faithful to us. It's interesting when Jesus was around, he spoke to the Pharisees about their lack of faithfulness. Their lack of faithfulness. Isn't it interesting that Jesus picks this up from the religious leaders of the day? Like I said a few moments ago, your faithfulness does not weaken God's faithfulness. He does not change. It is faith that you and I are called to have and increase and, and, and prove ourselves to be faithful people before God. I'm praying down the line that from when we became Christians to where we are now, however long that journey is, and hopefully we're more faithful to God now than we were back then because when we first got saved, I don't know about you, but I'm still working out my salvation. I'm still working out what I can do, what I can't do. Am I okay to do this? And I was brought up in a Christian home when my dad was an elder and a pastor and you're still kind of working stuff, stuff out. Am I okay to say these? Am I okay to kind of use these words? Am I okay to have these actions? It's working out those things. But I pray as we walk along that journey of sanctification with God that we're more faithful to God today than we were yesterday. Because we're called to be faithful people before him. We have to remain faithful to him no matter the cost, no matter the pain or the situation we may face. We heard it in, 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 of other nations where, you know, it's, it's, it's illegal to be a Christian. And you hear story after story like I do of, of Christians who are martyred for their faith. People who will, who will stand up even though it means it will cost them their lives. But they remain faithful even to their last breath. Somehow in the Western world we kind of have it a little bit easier, don't we? We kind of have it a little bit easier. Because it's okay just to kind of go to church and not go to church. It's okay to do stuff online or whatever it may be. There's still there's a call of faithfulness that God has for us. And then we come to prayer that we've mentioned already. Every time we come to prayer and ask and believe, it has to be coupled with faith. Sometimes we don't have is because we don't ask. Or maybe we ask, but we don't have the faith to believe that we would receive. So again, you guys that stood this morning concerning your employment, you know, pray in faith. Have a bit of energy and a bit of, I can't know what the Greek word, a bit of oomph behind your, your prayers and say, God, I stand on this. I stand on your word. Get some scripture verses that's going to back up what, what you're praying and say, God, I stand on your word. God, you said anything I ask for prayer, believe and I receive that it's mine, not Mark 11. Then God, I'm going to pray this morning. If this is your will, then I send this CV off. I go through this interview. God, why? Because you have placed favor upon me. We've got to be a little bit more powerful maybe in our, in, our, in our prayer life because of the faith that God is placing within our lives. In Galatians 2.16, it says, we were made righteous by the faithfulness of Christ. He is totally, totally faithful. He will not let you down. We're singing that song this morning and come up on there because God, because God, you are good, you are good, you are good. And I, and, I'm, and I was thinking to myself as we worship. I don't know, but my mind just kind of, kind of goes off by a walk by itself when we sing some song. You are good. I'm thinking, is there ever been a time where God has not been good? And I can't think of one. Can you? I've read Genesis to Revelation. I've been in this Word all my life. I've been in church all my life, even before I was born. And I can't think of any time in my life or anybody else's life that I know where a time where God has not been good. Yeah, we might have tough times in our lives and we might feel sometimes we're praying and it feels like the heavens are like brass and our prayers are not getting through. And we could be praying and praying and praying and feeling like Daniel in those 21 days and praying and not getting through. But I can't think of any time in my life where God has not been good or God has not been faithful. 
Just because I don't get the answers to the prayers of the way I pray them doesn't mean that he is not faithful. Because he's all-knowing. And he sees everything. And how he answers my prayers, even though I don't pray that particular way, actually how he answers is better. But I have to have enough faith to believe that, God, how you're answering what I'm praying, even though I didn't pray that way, God, is better for me. Because he totally, totally remains faithful. In John 13, verse 1, I love this. Is he, he loved his disciples to the end. Wow. Talk about faithfulness of Jesus. Now think about the disciples for a second. I wonder... It doesn't say in Scripture, but reading sometimes between the, the verses of Scripture, I read through, I wonder sometimes that the disciples get up Jesus' nose. You know when he's trying to send them out two by two, or they come along and they're feeding of the 5,000, oh, let's just send them away, and Jesus said, no, you feed them. And I wonder what conversations, and Scripture doesn't tell us what conversations, or even what looks is going on. You feed them? I said, well, I ain't got, I got no money, you got some money. How are, we, how are we going to feed 5,000 people? You can almost read between the lines of some of the conversations that just might go on. And I wonder, did the disciples ever wind Jesus up a little bit because of maybe their, maybe their, their human side of them or the conversations or the looks that went on? But here in John 13, verse 1, it says, He loved his disciples to the end. I wonder sometimes, do, do you annoy God? Why are you laughing, Liz? I wonder if sometimes, that, you know, with our actions or how we respond to maybe answers to prayer or however life goes sometimes, we're thinking, mm. but listen, it doesn't matter how many times we mess up or how many times we fall, as long as we just keep getting up, as long as we just keep repenting before God and allow God to continually change our lives, to be in change from one degree of glory to another, as long as we allow God to keep doing that in our lives, you know what, it doesn't matter, there's nothing you can do today that will make God love you any less. If God is love, and we mentioned this earlier, he's the same yesterday, then he can't help but love you. That's who he is. God is love. That's, that's who he is. That's who he is. And he loved his disciples to the end. And he showed his faithfulness to the Father as he prayed in the garden, as we mentioned earlier. In that Matthew 26 and 39, he says, going a little further, he fell to his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. That's a really, really powerful, dangerous prayer to pray. And I know when Helen and I have spent over the years just praying, God, listen, we'll do anything, we'll go anywhere. And we're prepared to do that, and we've done that all our lives. But when we come in our lives and we say, God, not my will be done, but yours, that's a really good prayer to pray, but be ready for the answer. It could mean changing jobs. It could mean moving house. It could mean even moving country. It could mean lots of different things because of God is control and we allow God then to come and lead our lives and we follow him heart, soul, mind, and strength. Then all different sorts of changes can take place. We think of all these great missionaries that have gone all over the world because they've said, God, my life is in your hands. Not my will, but yours be done. And we see incredible and we hear incredible stories of what God is doing. Why? Because we put our hands into the hands of the creator we say, God, we trust you, and we know you'll be faithful to us. Yes, Tom's times might be really tough. There might be some difficult things that are ahead, but God, you remain faithful. I put a few things down here sometimes where temptation versus faith. You ever been tempted? Remember, you can tell a Christian you're the truth. Been tempted in our lives. We know that temptation is, is, is not a sin. And Jesus has spent 40 years, sorry, 40 days in the desert. And he's hungry. I don't know about you guys around here, but I don't know if you could smell the, the tiger bread. You know, it was in my car when I brought it down this morning, thinking when I was just preparing this morning, coming in, thinking, mm, I was so tempted to take a slice of it, you know, and put a bit of butter on it, you know, because the smell of bread's lovely, isn't it? You know, when you walk through, Morrison's or, or Tesco or if you're really posh Marks and Sparks and you're walking through and all this lovely smell of bread and if you've not eaten for a few days you don't care about the calories anybody else with me 
You don't care, but you're really hungry and you go home and you, you open the cupboard doors in the fridge. You want to grab whatever's around because you don't want to spend 20 minutes making something. Or you drive through McDonald's, here's confession time. Or you drive through KFC, you don't want to go home and make something. You just want to have it now, don't you? Jesus has spent 40 days, 40 days in the desert. He's not eaten anything. And then Satan comes along and says, take this, this, this stone, turn it into bread. Now, I think the bread that Jesus would turn this into would, would far outweigh any baker. I think the smell of it would be incredible. Probably be calorie-free, gluten-free, everything else free. And why is free stuff in your bread taste or cost more? I, I, I don't get it. If you've got less stuff in your bread, why does it cost more? I don't understand that. And here was the opportunity now for Jesus to turn stone into bread because he's done his 40 days. His fast is coming to an end. And there was a temptation to turn the stone into bread or stand faithful to God. But we know the story, don't we? Sometimes the temptations challenge our faithfulness in the most difficult times of our lives. The most difficult times of our lives, sometimes the temptations come along to do this or cut some corners or quite easily not do this or to do that quite easily. But listen, church, remain faithful to him. He's remained faithful to you. Not even turning stone into bread. Praying God's will in the garden. Make sure you remain faithful to him because he's remained faithful to you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can stand up under it. So even when temptation comes along, you and I still have the opportunity through the Spirit of God on our lives. Now remember, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit here in Galatians 5. God's already said that when temptation comes along, you can't say, I, I, I couldn't help it. God always gives you a way out. True? Did we not read that in, in, in Corinthians? Is Paul not writing to the church at Corinth and say, even when temptation comes along, you don't have to give in to the temptation. You can still say faithful to God because here's a way out. And God will provide a way out for you. The temptation and Jesus, what he faced, yet he still remained faithful to us to our, to our, and to his father. His character didn't change in the midst of difficult circumstances. His character didn't change in the challenges that were ahead of him. Of course, the fruit of the Spirit's to do with character, isn't it? And again, I, I say this, I, I think God would rather us to have the fruit of the Spirit than the gifts of the Spirit. I think God's looking character over gifts all day long. And I think when your character's right, then, then God won't be able to help himself. And here's some gifts that just goes with it. Because Paul says, you know, you can have prophesying, you do all this, but without love, which is a fruit of the Spirit, then you're, you're nothing. You're just like a clanging symbol, and eventually that's just going to, that sound's going to disappear. There's the challenge for you and I, the character. So our characters remain faithful to God. Our characters remain strong in the fruit of the Spirit, even when temptation comes along, even when the enemy comes along to help us or to push us towards that being unfaithful to him. No, there's always a way out, church. Remain faithful to God. Hebrews 3, 2, it says, He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses just as Moses was faithful in God's house. So again, we see even Moses was faithful. That helped us begin to understand. See, Jesus built faithfulness into his life. Well, you're thinking, well, Phil, he was, he was Jesus. But of course he was, but he became flesh. The incarnate became flesh and made his life among us. So he was God wrapped in flesh. So he still had the challenges of hunger and thirst. He still had the challenges of temptation that he had to face. All these things were still in front of him, but he remained faithful. He built faithfulness into his life. He learned the word of God. There, there we, church, we, we have no excuse when we fall down and we fail and we think, oh, well, I didn't know that was in the word of God. You have the word of God. Whose responsibility is to read it? Don't go quiet on me now. Whose responsibility is to read the Word of God? It's your responsibility. 
I can teach you. I can teach you what I know. And the Holy Spirit is a better teacher than I. And he can teach you all those things as you open scripture. And he can help you with all those things to help us remain faithful. And especially in these last days. We don't know what's going to come to the church in the last days. But God's looking for a faithful church. A faithful people. In the middle of temptation and trial and difficulty, in the middle of whatever else is going on, he's looking for people who were faithful. And Jesus built faithfulness into his life. He learned the word of God. Not only did he know it, he was obedient to it. What would you say if, if, if you knew somebody who knew scripture and, and, and spoke out scripture but did something completely opposite to it, but claimed to be a follower how would you react to that? Well, Jesus picked up on this, didn't he? And he called them hypocrites because you, you know. This is what scripture says, but actually you're, you're, not, you're not doing it. You're actually, you're, you're saying it out and you're telling the people do it, but actually you're not doing it yourself. And so he describes them as whitewashed tombs. You're all clean on the outside. Some man looks at you, look all great, but actually inside you're quite dirty because you're saying one thing and, you, and you're doing another. God wants us not just to know his word, but be obedient to it and be faithful to what it says. Every day, Jesus walked in his faithfulness to his Father. And as you and I walk in the will of God each day, we begin to build faithfulness. And we begin to build this, this deep relationship with God in our lives. Jeremiah 42 verse 5 says this, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness. That's who he is. A true witness. And faithful witness. In Revelation 3, 14, these are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness. In Revelation 19, 11, I saw heaven open and before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true. That's who he is. He can't be unfaithful. He is faithful. That's who he is. He's faithful and he's true. There's no unfaithfulness in him and there's no untruth in him. He is truth. And again, truth is a person. He's faithful and he's true. In Revelation 21 and verse 5, it says this, write these words down for these words are faithful and true. Let me bring this into a close. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. There's a challenge church for you and I if Jesus was faithful and remains to be faithful to you and I, then there's a call to the church, there's a call to you and I to remain faithful in these last days, to remain faithful in our relationship with each other, to remain faithful in our relationship to God, to be faithful in the calling that's upon our lives, to be faithful to, to be part of, of this house and to follow the vision and the heart and the plans God's got. There's a call to be faithful today. And this great chapter of chapter 11 of Hebrews, known as the faith chapter, we see the faithfulness of men and women who followed God with a heart, soul, mind, and strength. In verse 1 it says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith sees things before they happen. Now come on, who, 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 that's, that's challenging for us, isn't it? Because it's quite easy to believe in something that we see. It's quite easy to say, oh, I knew that was going to happen after it's happened. Come on, we, we, we all say it. But the evidence of faith is believing in something that we do not see. And here's the call already in verse 2. It said, this is what the ancients were commended for. Verse 3, by faith we understand. Verse 5 Oh, sorry, verse 4, by faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice. In verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken from this life. In verse 6, but without faith, it is what? It's what? I impossible? So we've got to have faith. We are called to have faith. Because if you don't have faith, then you're not pleasing God. Would, would that be fair without scriptures kind of unpacking for us a little bit? Because without faith, it is impossible. Two weeks ago when we had Pentecost Sunday, what did we do with unbelief? 
We put it out of the house because we want faith to increase. We want faith to increase. We want faith to increase in our lives. We want faith to increase in this house that we see more signs and miracles and wonders. We want more testimonies and testimonies and testimonies to God's grace and power, even though it's to do with maybe employment. But we also, I want to get to the days when blind eyes are open and deaf ears hear and the lame begin to walk and people come in wheelchairs and leave pushing the wheelchairs out of the place. I want faith enough for that. Is anybody else with me? I want that faith. I want that gift, not just of healing, but of the miraculous. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Verse 7, by faith, Noah. By verse 8, by faith, Abraham. In verse 9, by faith, he made home in, in the promised land. In verse 11, by faith, Abraham. In verse 17, by faith, Abraham. In verse 20, by faith, Isaac. In verse 21, by faith, Jacob. In verse 22, by faith, Joseph. In verse 23, by faith, Moses. In verse 24, by faith, Moses. In verse 29, by faith, the people passed through on the Red Sea. What was impossible became possible because of faith. We need this kind of faith. In verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. Anybody else like to have been there? Just being a reporter. I'd love to have seen it, wouldn't you? Just walking around. Not saying anything. That's a challenge, isn't it? Just walking around a massive city. Not to say anything. Oh, beautiful walls. Isn't that lovely? Look at this. And a beautiful day today. They say anything. And then they get to day seven. Day six, day seven. Seven times. It's a challenge in it. But on the command, we're going to blow some trumpets, we're going to smash some lights, and the walls are going to come down. Can you imagine that team talk before? But where's the sledgehammers? Any dynamite? Where's, where's the TNT? Come on, where, how, how are these going to come down? You want me to blow my trumpet really, really loud on a wall that's so loud that two chariots can go around at the same time, passing each other, and people live, have houses within the walls. The walls are like massive. Maybe the width of these chairs would be maybe wider. And you want me to stand and go, and that's going to come down. Think about it. If you took a trumpet to your house, your side wall, and blew a trumpet up, what would happen? But by faith, by faith, impossible things become possible. By faith, by faith, by faith. Verse 31, by faith, the prostitute, Rahab. And you read on through and you see by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. I wonder as we get to the end of chapter 11 and we, and, and we got to write verse 41. There's only 40. 41 you get to write by faith and put your name in there. By faith, Phil prayed for somebody in a wheelchair and they began to walk. I wonder what you would write. By faith, Helen, what would you write? What would you write, Sam? By faith, Sam. Is it possible? Is it possible? Because Jesus was faithful. We see this. His character was faithful. He had faith in every part of his life. Even after Lazarus is dead and the old King James says he stinketh. He's four days and he's in the grave. And Jesus still had enough faith to say, Lazarus, come forth. That faith, God is looking for his people. To have the character of faith, to live faithfully before him. And have the, and have the, the, the gift of faith that would be released in the house. But it starts with the character. It starts with the character. And I get to back to Hebrews 11, by faith, by faith, by faith. Let me ask you this question. I don't want you to answer when you think about it. How faithful are you to Jesus? If it was a scale one to 10 and 10 was you were totally faithful, I wonder where you'd put yourself on there. 
He said, I think the word of God is there for us to kind of look at it almost like a mirror when we read stuff like this to help us begin to understand what actually, if Jesus was faithful in his character and his personality before God, you know, if he was a 10, then I wonder what I would be. Because I know for myself, and I'm not speaking for you, but I'm, I'm not exactly like Jesus right now. I'm not there. I know I want to be. But the challenges of life and the valleys and the stuff that we go through and the temptations, there's still a call for us to remain faithful before God. You see, sometimes God's looking for us to be faithful in the little things rather than big things because little things matter. Mighty big doors swing on little hinges. Massive ships move on little rudders. Got it right. Scripture puts it another way in Song of Songs 2. It's little foxes that spoil the vine. Little things matter. Little things matter in our lives because little things can spoil our faithfulness. And we have to be aware of those things. Be aware of the little foxes. Be aware of the little things in our lives. See, Judas betrayed and Peter denied and all disciples run away. Where was their faithfulness? Peter said, I'll die with you, Jesus, to the end. He takes out the sword, doesn't he, when he's in the garden of Gethsemane and he cuts off the ear of one of the soldiers that's around. Jesus said, no, 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 no. This, this, this is not the way it's supposed to be because I need to remain faithful to my father and this is part of the plan. They're going to arrest me. They're going to put me through trials. They're going to break all their own rules and, and regulations and everything that they put in place all the way through the Old Testament. They're going to break all of those rules and they're going to beat me and they're going to crucify me and that's, that's all part of it. So Peter, this is not the way it's got to be done. And so Jesus just picks up the ear and puts it back on. You've seen the movies when you see the guy suddenly realizes his ear's back on and everything's functioning. Now, you guys are a medical. Your, near, your ear is really, really load of detail in there, isn't there? Big bass drums in there and all sorts of stuff. There's, there's lots of things around there, little tiny bones and things. There's lots of things that are around. Jesus knew that his disciples would run away but he still chose him. He knew that Peter would deny and he knew that Judas would betray. But we go back to John 13, 1 and it says he still remained faithful to the end. You see, when things happen in our lives, it does not change who God is. It doesn't change who he is. He is faithful when things are going well and he remains faithful when things aren't going so well. That's who he is. And so that's the challenge I want to leave you with this morning, church. How, how is your character of faithfulness? How is your, your character of faithfulness? Is it like Jesus? Because that's the challenge. That's the challenge for you and I. And we don't have any excuse, really, because it's the fruit of the Spirit, and we have the Spirit of God. But the challenge is to hopefully, in our lives, have more faithfulness in our character, in the fruit of our lives, to, to, to show and experience more faithfulness towards God, towards each other, towards the calling upon our lives, towards our relationship that we have with Him. That when temptation comes along and difficulty comes along, we just don't give in to the highest bidder. Or we give in because we can't be bothered, whatever it may be. No, we will remain faithful. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. I just want to pray around two areas here just as we would bring our service to a close. First of all, the, the fruit of faithfulness, a part of the fruit of the gift of the Spirit, that God would help us. It's a challenge today to remain faithful to God in a world that's 
in a world that's broken, in a world that's fallen, in a, in a world that doesn't want to know Jesus, in a world that has every different religion under the sun. And the challenge to remain faithful sometimes is extremely difficult. But that's what we're called to do because we're disciples. And we go back to that definition of disciple. It's not just somebody who hears the teaching of Jesus, but one who becomes like Jesus. I just wonder for a moment while our heads are bowed and our eyes closed, you just place your hand over your heart for me a moment. I just want to pray over you. Father, would you help us in our faithfulness towards you? We're so grateful that you are a faithful God. We are so grateful that you were faithful to us in the garden, faithful to us on the cross, faithful to the Father, faithful to the will. And we pray and we ask this morning, Jesus, would you help us in times of difficulties and problems and temptations, God, that we will remain faithful. We will remain faithful. We will be the people that will stand up and say we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because we still believe it's the power of God on the salvation. We will live out that we know that we're the head and not the tail. We would know even though there's so many different religions in our world, so many different belief systems, even atheists, but we know our God is faithful and so we will remain faithful to him. Father, help us, I pray. The second part I want to pray over is Jesus had no problem having faith for miracles and signs and wonders. And we're putting some plans in place that we're going to go through the gifts of the Spirit shortly. And there's a gift of faith. I'm going to ask you to stand in a moment in response to if you're asking God for the faith for miracles, signs, wonders, breakthrough, that God would give you the eyes of faith, even though it's not happened yet, but you would begin to see it with your spiritual eyes, because when you see it with your spiritual eyes, you begin to pray a different way. And if that's you, and you're praying for an increase of faith, for whatever it may be, for breakthrough, miraculous healing, whatever it may be, why don't you just stand to your feet for me? I'm just going to pray, and then we're going to finish. And you've taken this step of faith by standing to your feet. And God's just taken a note. <laughs> he said, I see you standing to your feet this morning in faith. Because you're saying to me this morning, not to me as pastor, but you're saying to God this morning, God, I want the faith to move into the unseen. the unseen. And I'm standing with you because God spoke to me many years ago about, stand, about walking in the impossibilities and walking in the unseen. And I want to call things into the now that have not yet happened. And Father, as we stand this morning, we stand in faith for the things that have not yet seen, for the things that we're still praying about that we've not got answers to. We're standing, God, because we want faith to increase in our lives and in this house for your glory and for your honor. We're standing, God, because every time we pray and we're asking for a miracle that we're not having to wait, but it happens right away. 
We're praying for a breakout of the miraculous. Like we stood and we prayed, and we prayed over those people who don't know you yet. And yet, God, why can't it be this week? We have the faith enough to believe that, Father, it can happen this week. Father, let faith increase in our lives. Let faith increase in our lives. And you guys that are standing, you know the only way that's going to help this? You're going to have to spend time in the Spirit. You're going to spend time in prayer. You're going to spend time in God's Word. That will increase your faith. Reading the stuff how Jesus did it. I remember many years ago when it was prayed over, I, I just keep praying, God, I want, I want the, the healing ministry. I want to pray for people to see them sick. So what I did is I wrote, got all the books that I could see it. I went through all the times Jesus laid his hands on the sick. And we need to know that stuff. How did Jesus do it? Well, Jesus spent time in the room with his father. He went off by the mountaintop. He went off to a silent place. And then when he came to pray, he didn't ask for healing. He commanded it. Because you've already seen it happen in the spiritual realms. Faith increase. Let faith increase in our lives, God. That even when people come along who, who don't know you yet, God, are asking and asking for advice, God, we can still pray the prayer of faith and use it as a signpost to point them to Jesus. Father, seal this in our hearts, in our lives. The challenge might come the next few days, guys, to, to challenge what you're standing for. But what we prayed at the start was the fruit of the Spirit, that you would remain faithful. And may the Holy Spirit remind you of this moment that when things come along that are tough, actually, no, I took a stand on this Sunday morning, on the 2nd of June, that I would remain faithful to the calling. I would remain faithful to God, what you've said to me, what you're taking me into. And even though there may be storms, even though there might be rocky periods, even though there might be voices from all over the place, from man and from woman and from the enemy, no, no, I'm still going to remain faithful because you are faithful. And you're not a man that you should lie. And so you speak this out, God, something's got to happen and something's got to change for your glory and your honor. Seal this in our hearts and lives, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm looking, I'm looking for the band. There you go. Come and join. You guys that stood earlier on concerning um, your employment, um, if I can help you in any way, or you want to come and share it and pray with you, or one of my team, uh, my team, I mean, uh, my deacons, or some of my heads of ministries, come and just speak with them, and uh, they'll take some time to pray with you again. If you've got interviews coming up, drop me an email, drop me a text. I'd love to know and just pray for you concerning uh, that particular time. We're going to finish with a song. At the back, we have uh, some homemade soup. Uh, we have some tea and coffee. We have sausages. I thought they would get a little bit more excitement than that. And there's lots of bread and there's some cakes and stuff from yesterday, a men's breakfast. And also um, one lady has brought some cakes this morning as well. So there's lots of food at the back. So please do come and um, have some fellowship together. Don't forget to sign up for the various things that's online. Look at the website. Um, the ones that's flying across the middle, at the, sometimes you've got to sign up for that way rather than under a ministry. Please do have a look at those things. Come on, stand with me. Let's worship as we finish. And then stay and have some fellowship with us um, this morning. God bless you. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I
Before we go, it's somebody's birthday today. 